All right, for those, welcome to Real Talk. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. So let's get into it. What problem is drive solving? So uh, drive in its very basic, you know, for anyone to understand, it's like Uber on blockchain. That's what we call ourselves for the sake of simplicity. But if you look at ride healing industry, it's a decade of evolution that has happened uh, in the name of technological disruption. But what we don't understand in this whole journey of calling it a technological disruption and setting this convenience, we have lost a lot of freedom that you and I as a user had or drivers had. So if all the ride healing company today are billion dollar companies, uh, but if you look back and drivers are still struggling to make their livelihood, it says a lot about itself that something is broken and need attention. And uh, uh, drive started with a very basic problem that I faced myself during a ride where a driver asked me to cancel a ride. And he said me this, that I'll take you to the airport, pay me 100 bucks less for a very reason that he was getting a commission cut of 40% on that ride. And that's a huge commission that drivers are paying to ride healing companies for the platform they are providing. And that's what we are doing at Drive, making sure when there are value creators who exchange value among themselves, why are they not sharing reward also among themselves? So that's what Drive is making sure both driver and rider get what they deserve uh, in this whole ride healing experience. So this is a classic problem with marketplace apps today. Can you describe why Web3 allows you to fix this problem that Web2 created? So, the you know, initially when I started with the problem statement, I don't come from a Web3 background or, you know, new blockchain as an industry before I got into this problem. Uh, but uh, I started with a problem of commission. But then I realized the problem is not about commission. It is about existence of a centralized entity that controls everything and anything in this industry. And that's what Web3 is about, where we're talking about giving back ownership back to the people and retail users who are basically today puppet in the hand of centralized big tech giants. And uh, when I started reading more about Web3 and very classic example of why there was a need for a Bitcoin to defeat the whole centralized controlled uh, uh, financial ecosystem, I realized this is what I need to build uh, what we want to call Drive. So where is Drive right now in terms of adoption, users, developer activity? So uh, we actually started our operation with a pilot launch back in November 2021. We started with 25 drivers, scaled from 25 drivers to 1,000 drivers in July 2022. To our time now, we have scaled to 25,000 plus drivers on the platform, 200,000 users in the platform. Uh, we're operational only in one city in India, that's Bangalore in India. So if you're in Bangalore, you can actually experience Drive. Uh, that's where we stand in terms of operations because, you know, a lot of time I've got to hear that that having this idea as a white paper because we have read about Imagine Uber on blockchain for so long and never seen an application being running in reality. So for us to make this reality was a bigger challenge to have our existence in place. Uh, but here we are uh, with a fully operational product in Bangalore and India. We're a growing team of uh, 50 plus people working in different uh, teams. Uh, so that's where we stand. There's a lot that we need to achieve uh, in terms of what where we see drive and, you know, decentralizing mobility as a whole. So you have 25,000 drivers in Bangalore alone. Yes. Wow. That's incredible. And where are you expanding to next? That's so successful. I'm sure you're moving to a new city. Yeah, so we are working on few more tier one cities in India. Uh, we do have some international cities planned as well for this year. So we have applied for licenses. And as and when the licenses come, because at the end of the day, you need real world cab aggregator license to run a taxi company. Uh, so that's in progress. As and when the licenses comes in place, we'll go to those cities. So... Where exactly is blockchain fitting into your application? Do the drivers interact with it? So idea of having blockchain was to enable certain things in the app platform and not 
making drivers of rider actually get impacted by the fact that there's a blockchain there because i don't think so they need to know about it and that's what we have to achieve in the longer run with you know, the adoption that we're speaking about what we do is we use smart contracts to do fair calculation and driver allocation and this is a place where the maximum manipulation happened today uh, in the ride sharing space where you and i might end up paying different fare for the same destination or a two different drivers in the same location why one driver get picked up and not another that's that's a place where all the exploitation also happens so for starters that's where we use uh, smart contracts to do our fare calculation and driver allocation which allow us to be more transparent and fair with both the driver and rider which in itself is a far sighted dream in mobility industry and um. Do you guys have a token or an incentive model? Yeah, we do have a token called DRF. Uh, DRF uh, plays a very important role, although we have not yet integrated DRF into the platform because we wanted to take one step at a time. Uh, but uh, on on the platform side, drive token uh, plays an important role in terms of you know incentive token or a loyalty token where you earn DRF for different activities in the platform. But on the other side, DRF plays a very important role when it comes to expanding Drive as a uh, company or going to different part of the globe when it comes to our uh, city operations. So, if you want to run Drive operation in your city, you can do that by staking the DRF token, which acts like a security deposit. But also, community that hold DRF token can delegate that token to you and earn APYs by staking DRF token. to for that city wise operation so that's where drf plays a very important role we have that utility coming in as well uh, we're doing our first franchise staking uh, for bangalore itself where community will be able to stake their token and start earning apys from the real world operation of drive very very cool this is an amazing application and i love how the token is really delivering value back to the users and the community yeah really cool So, let's talk about Webstream. What piqued your interest about Webstream? I guess uh, for us, uh, for a long time, you know, interacting with different layers and different infrastructures that we have came across, we realized that nobody has built something that solves mobility specific primitive issues. You know, uh, geolocation plays a very important role for us. But can I? actually send geolocation to a blockchain or how do i actually interact with geolocation and when i actually first came across and you guys are like okay we have certain things we can actually pick up geolocation talk to the mobile applications and uh, uh, we'll be able to do certain things and know about driver locations and all of that and that was my reason to see somebody actually picking up mobility primitives uh, in this space so you're talking about anonymously sending location data to a smart contract to basically exactly. run the app. Okay. Yeah. And so this is going to be used uh on the driver's phone. That's how the location will be sent via website. Yes. Yes. And what's the state of that integration? Have you begun that already or is that There there's there's a discussion happening between both the tech team so they're going back and forth there but when you know how it needs to be done but I guess there's a good level of progress that's been made in terms of how things has to be done uh and I leave it to my tech team to work on that <laughs> but yeah I keep checking right. where do we stand so yeah there's back and forth work happening on that front so can you describe more in detail what you're going to be doing with that location data so location data is very important for us as a platform to run operations so whenever we get a ride request uh you know we need to fetch driver location and accordingly send them a ride location so for drive as a platform the platform should always know the real location of a driver because based on that we send riders the information that how far is your driver when you get a match with a driver we always see this okay how far the driver is how far is from my pickup location so all the epa related information how much time driver is going to do Uh, take to reach you then uh, then when the ride gets started towards the end of the ride the fare gets recalculated based on actual distance and actual time taken to travel so those are the location where you actually get this real uh, real time data and that you use to process the ride journey huh. 
And are you also going to use it to issue NFTs for, let's say, like Uber has badges if you're a driver and you complete yes. more than five. Yes, drivers. and correct. So that's a discussion we were having with IoTX team as well about converting driver efficiency score into an NFT badge. We call it, you know, efficiency score for driver. But it's dependent upon different activities of the driver. But that's an NFT that we want to eventually give out to them. And that's like a... a score a credit score that driver might carry and you know a badge of honor and depend upon that various things also get determined that also is something that we have in pipeline that we want to achieve do you think passengers would also receive nfts is that is it also integrated on the passenger yes so uh, on the passenger side we want to do it for different activities and a very important aspect of drive is the network building exercise where driver and rider can build their own network and get rewarded in our token for every time you take a ride and i have referred you into the platform i make money so based on the bigger the network you are you have you go level up into that journey. It's like a leaderboard that we want to build around. And for that, we would like to issue NFT. So it's like a different implementation on both the side, depends upon you know, what's important to them. Awesome. So let me ask you a high level question. Let's say Drive is maximally successful. What does the company look like in five years and what does the world look like in five years? So for us, uh, in five years, uh, you know, we would like to see drive in more and more cities. That's the aim that, you know, the problem that I face in Bangalore in India with the driver is a problem that you go to any city across the globe. You talk to a driver, he's facing the same issue. And uh, if we are able to build something that can solve the issue here in Bangalore, I guess every other driver across the globe deserves to be a part of a platform that gives him everything that they deserve. And that's the whole idea of what we want to uh, achieve with Drive, have more city operations in place. Uh, and that's what Drive looks like for me, you know, be being across the globe in more cities. Uh, that's what we want to do. Uh, for the world, I'd say, you know, uh, there's a lot that at least we as an industry need to achieve. And I was today itself speaking on another call about that we always emphasize on this billion users coming uh, into Web3. And I, for me, it's going to come from real world mobile applications that are part of uh, daily livelihood. You know, an application like Uber is an application you never delete from your phone for a very basic reason that it's part of your daily life. So we need to build real world applications that are part of daily lives. And I guess five years from now, we will have been users. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, we won't be speaking about this. Like, how do we achieve that? Because uh, Web3 and blockchain is going to go to the backend where it actually belongs to and we'll have seamless applications uh, that are user, using blockchain, that are giving rewards in digital currency, and users really don't know about this whole technology, but is getting benefits out of it. That was brilliantly said. I couldn't agree more. Um, just one more question. You talked about it in your last answer, but can you take me through your thoughts on the deep end machine fi industry as a whole? Yeah, so I guess uh, ever since I started Drive, and you know, I was very alone in this journey talking about uh, we need to build real and build infrastructure, we need to get people involved, build things that matter. And finally, when I'm hearing more about Deep End and people are actually paying attention to it, I guess we are getting it right finally. Finally, people are paying attention to things that will actually take us to the next uh, wave of what uh, this industry looks like. For me, it's a very important thing that, you know, we build real world use cases, get people involved, have infrastructure uh, in a place which is not controlled by centralized party and uh, where uh, individuals can be part of it, be it, you know, location based services where the infrastructure is not owned by huge corporates. But as an individual, I'm contributing to it as a part of it and getting incentivized by it. It's such a huge thing if done properly. I am. I'm, I cannot be more happier than a time now when we're finally talking about it. And not just talking about it. Drive is one of the most successful, if not the most, that I've heard of in terms of 
actual adoption, 25,000 drivers in a single city. Yeah. So congratulations on all your success. Thank you. And IOTech's really going to be following you closely yeah. and watching how you integrate WebStream and make the application better. So, well, Ferdos, thank you so much for your time and insights today and good luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was really nice talking to you.